Mr MP, Mark Francois, who retained his seat of Raleigh and Wickford. Mr Francois, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, obviously pleasing for you to have such a big Conservative majority, but I wonder how it affects your role in the European Research Group and your ability to pressure the Prime Minister over whatever happens with Brexit. How do you feel about your role in that? We don't need to pressure the Prime Minister. He's played a blinder. He's done exactly what we wanted. You know, the European Research Group, I and my colleagues, have wanted for years for us to leave the European Union, to live in a country that elects its own government, makes its own laws, and then lives under them in peace. We can now do that because the Prime Minister ran a brilliant general election campaign and we're going to leave the European Union at the fourth time of asking on the 31st of January. So we, we don't need to put any pressure on the Prime Minister. He's been brilliant. He's going to take us out. That's what we've always wanted. What That's what the it, British people voted for. What if it proves to be the case, as some people are you know, raising the prospect of, that he maybe changes tack a little bit because of the leeway he has with that majority to so not pursue the kind of maybe deal in the future or possibly even to extend when it comes to later this year? Would you be angry about that if that was to come to pass? Well, we wouldn't support any extension of what's called the transition period, but the Prime Minister has been adamant he doesn't want to do that and there's no need to do that. So for the, for the benefit of your viewers, we've got two different things here. We've got the withdrawal agreement, which is, if you like, the divorce agreement mm -hmm. that takes us out. We need an Act of Parliament to ratify that because it's an international treaty. We will start on that possibly as early as Friday. We will then get that through and finish it early in the new year, and that means we leave the European Union on the 31st of January. That deal has been negotiated. The bill is there. That's not going to yeah, change. Yeah, I, th I, th I think people expect, you know, we obviously we expect that to come back on Friday, and um, it's now very clear that that will happen in February. Yeah. I think what I'm talking about is the likes of some diplomats that the Financial Times has spoken to in the European Union who think that they believe an extension is inevitably on the cards. But I, well, I think that's wrong. The second thing, as I was going to come on to say, is negotiating a free trade agreement. Now, part of what the Prime Minister did was he changed what's called the political declaration. Forgive all the jargon, but that is the thing that, if you like, governs the tram lines within which this free trade deal will be negotiated. Under Theresa May's version, that would have been a chequered style of high alignment. That's been changed, so the desired end state is already agreed by both sides as a comprehensive free trade agreement so that we can trade to our mutual economic advantage with our European partners with low or no tariffs into the foreseeable future. That's something that Eurosceptics have wanted for donkey's years. So again, the PM did brilliantly. Now. Those negotiations, I believe, can be concluded by the end of 2020. Why do I say that? Well, when it came to renegotiating the withdrawal agreement, everyone and his wife said it was impossible to do that. The PM did it in a matter of yeah. months. Well, we, we will see, won't we? We're definitely going to find out. Uh, I do want to ask you a little bit about the, the results more. As